Hey guys, for those of you who don't know me, I am Heidi Hisrick, and today I'm gonna to show you how to make this beautiful origami organelles heart. And I'm gonna do it while I wear my beautiful heart earrings that my daughter Lily made for me. So we are going to be cutting and folding and taping. In order to do this activity, you need to first purchase the origami organelles heart from origami organelles. There's a link down below. Or if your teacher already purchased it and provided it to you, you can go ahead and get started. Here's what you are going to need. You'll need the three pages of template. These might have been printed on a color printer or maybe you print them on uh, black and white and then you can color them in. So both options come with the Origami Organelles Human Heart. You're also going to need scissors and tape and some kind of pen to mark up the heart as you build it. Now the first thing we're going to do today is we're going to cut out the heart. We're going to set aside all the rest of the papers and just cut out the base of the heart. You should now have something that looks like this with all of the white parts removed and you can go ahead and throw those in the trash. And next we're going to cut along everywhere that you see white lines like this. Don't cut on the dotted line, just cut on the solid white lines. The next step is to go ahead and label the different chambers of the heart. So in the top left hand corner we have our right atrium and in the top right hand corner the left atrium and the reason the left is on the right and the right is on the left is because this is a front view of the heart. So if you actually hold the heart up against your body you'll see that the left will be on the left and the right on the right. Down at the lower part we have the right ventricle and the left ventricle. And now we'll tape it to put the, to give this dimensionality. Uh, you might notice I, I already taped it one time and then realized I hadn't recorded, so I'm just going to do it again. So you have some places where there are slits to attach the parts. First of all, at the base, you have this little tab here, and we're going to put it underneath flip this over and just add a little piece of tape. I like to tear my tape pieces in half like this. Then we have a slit here that folds in. Just fit those two slits together and then add a bit of tape. Be careful not to tape over that slit because we're going to need that. And then a bit more tape just to secure the side to the bottom. And we'll do just a little bit right here as well. Okay. Here's another place where the slits are going to fit together. And you want to avoid taping over this right here. If you do though, you just use your scissors to cut again. And one more place where we're going to see overlapping slits is right here. And again, I like to secure those with a little bit of tape. So here is our outline of the heart. That brings us to one more area of the heart that I want to label, and that is the tip of the heart at the base, down at the bottom. And that is called the apex. Apex means point or tip. So for instance, on a mountain, the peak of the mountain is also known as the apex. And the tip of the heart always points toward the left-hand side. So that's one way to differentiate when you have a heart in front of you that you're dissecting. You, If you lay it down, um, the left side of the heart is going to have the apex, which means it's pointing to your right. Now we're going to cut out the piece that represents the septum. But before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and label this the septum. And septum means wall. 
One way that I remember this is that between the two sides of your nose, there is a septum. So that area between your two nostrils is also a septum. So this is going to be the wall that separates the left and right side of the heart. So let's go ahead and cut out the septum. Okay, so I cut out the septum and then I cut along the white lines just like we did previously. And now we're just going to put this septum down the middle of the heart. So we have another slit here. That's the slit for the septum. Fit it right down in there. And we have another slit right here in between these two V's. And we're just going to secure this with a little bit of tape. Now that I've done that, I'm going to trim the excess so this is still shaped like a V because we're going to need that V for when we add our blood vessels. So the septum serves a very important role. It keeps the left and the right side of the heart completely separate. The blood can never cross from left to right in a human being because the right side all lacks oxygen and the left side all has oxygen. So they really function separately as two separate pumps and you have to keep them separate. Now we're going to get the rest of the piece that had the septum on it, and we are going to make the walls to separate the atria from the ventricles. So go ahead and cut out these pieces. Very official. Okay, so I have cut around the edges of each of these. I've also cut on the white lines like we did, but not the dotted lines. Now these have a special cut that you have to make. You have to cut on the solid black lines as well. So just go up to the center and then cut along each direction because we are making a valve. And you're gonna do this on both pieces. These are our atrioventricular valves, the valves that separate each atria from the ventricle. The last thing to do is to fold along the dotted white line like so. So we have two mirror images. Now we're going to go ahead and put these in the heart, but I actually have to flip them this way to do this. And I want to label the valves before we do this. So this one is going to go on the right side of the heart between the right atrium and the right ventricle. And that valve is called the tricuspid valve. Make sure you can say tricuspid. It's actually named for the, the fact that it has three points, tricusp. And on this, it looks like it has two flaps, but in reality, it has three. Then this one goes on the left side of the heart, and it has two names. It is called the bicuspid valve, two flaps but more commonly it's referred to as the mitral valve. Now we have to find the places where these fit into each other, the slits that we made. And then do a little bit of folding and taping. So when you are finished, it should look like this. The blood comes into each atria, passes through each valve into the ventricle, and then it leaves. Okay, now we're going to build the blood vessels that allow blood to enter the heart. So you want to cut out these four rectangles here. Now that we have these four pieces, we're going to fold them on the dotted line, and this time we want to fold them each in on one another. These are the blood vessels that bring blood into the heart, into the atria. 
and each atrium receives blood from a couple different veins running to the heart. So let's start with the right side. We have the superior vena cava. This brings blood from the upper body, superior above, like the head and the arms. And we have the inferior vena cava. This brings blood from the lower body, from the gut and the legs. Both of these lead into the right atrium and we'll attach them in just a moment. On the left side of the heart, we have the pulmonary veins and they're coming from each lung. So let's label one the left pulmonary vein. This is the one, oh, I spelled pulmonary wrong, pulmonary. Uh, this is the one coming from the left lung and we have the right pulmonary vein that's coming from the right lung. So now we bring our heart back. These are a little tricky to tape in, but what you want to do, each one of them forms a V, and I found the easiest way is just to put a little tape on each side, and then shape it into the V, and fold the tape like this. Then we will do the pulmonary veins. It doesn't really matter if the left or right is on the top because really it's really it's twisting around if it's coming from the, the right side and just kind of wrapping around the heart. Here we have all of these pieces. We're going to fold on the dotted lines. And these have a different kind of valve. These are called semi-lunar valves. And they're going to end up going like this, basically folding over as much as it's possible to. This represents our aorta. The aorta is the biggest blood vessel in the body. It's as big as a fat highlighter or even a garden hose. And it has super high pressure because the blood is being pumped out of the heart. Let's go ahead and place our aorta. I found it easiest with this to first tape the valve like so. And now we're going to build the pulmonary arteries. And for this, you want to do a cut right here between A and B. And then fold. We have another semi-lunar valve here. So I'll go ahead and tape. the semi-lunar valve. And then this piece is going to get folded. The aorta, the aorta does branch into many different arteries, as do the pulmonary arteries, but that's only been shown in the model for the pulmonary arteries. So this is the branching. So we want a little bit of tape to connect each of those. So tape B to B. and A to A. And there we go, we have the branching. Now I can't quite fit the name of that valve on the valve itself, so I'm gonna write it right here in the heart. The pulmonary valve. And so it's easy to remember, you pass through the aortic valve to enter the aorta, you pass through the pulmonary valve to enter the pulmonary arteries. Before I tape these in, let's go ahead and label them pulmonary arteries. 
Pulmonary means lungs. That's why the pulmonary veins are coming back from the lungs and the pulmonary arteries are running to the lungs. And you have a left and a right pulmonary artery at branches so that the left pulmonary artery can run to the left lung to get oxygen and the right pulmonary artery can run to the right lung to get oxygen. Now we'll go ahead and tape it in. Okay, let's review the path of blood in the heart. Blood comes into the heart through the vena cavas and the pulmonary veins. It enters into the atria. Then it passes through these valves, which are called the atrioventricular valves, through the tricuspid and the bicuspid into the ventricles. Then it goes up and out of the ventricles. It has to pass through the semilunar bulbs, known as the pulmonary and aortic valves, into the aorta and the pulmonary arteries. The pulmonary arteries carry deoxygenated blood to the lungs to get oxygen, and the aorta carries blood with oxygen all over the body. Your finished heart should look like this. So now that you hold it up on your body, you can see that the left is on the left and the right is on the right. If you enjoyed building the heart, you can check the Origami Organelles playlist for more Origami Organelles. Uh, I have DNA right now and the nervous system, but I'll be adding more to those. And if you want to know more about the heart and blood vessels, check out the heart playlist. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.